is good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video today ladies and gentlemen we are going to be doing a brand new thing that we have done before in the past with wwe you know i've done takeovers of wwe i've fantasy booked what wwe does i've taken over i've said you know what vince mcmahon you're getting the hell out of here brad i'm the one in charge now and we've ran through the ringer you know i've given my own personal thoughts and opinions on fantasy bookings i've done all kinds of stuff like that i've replaced vince i've said this is how it's going to be done now and today we're going to do the same thing but instead of WWE and focusing on the wrestling, we're flipping it over to the figure side of things, guys. We're going over to Mattel, headquarters of Mattel, and I'm taking over today. I, I step in. This is in a fantasy land. This is in a perfect world. This is talking about where Mattel, like, I, I just step in there and I'm like, I'm the owner now. I say what goes. This is what's going to be done regardless of money issues and deco and costs of sets, and I don't know the details, okay? I don't know what goes into a set, how much money they have to make, how much, I mean, there are specific specific guidelines that they have to follow and there's a certain amount of money that they got to make each set and there's profit margins and all kinds of stuff that goes into a Mattel set. We all look at it sometimes and we go, why the hell they do that? Well, I'm sure there's some sort of business-like perspective that they took on those specific actions most of the time. But today we're going to throw all that shit out the window and I'm stepping into Mattel headquarters and I am the leader. I came in and it's literally, okay, Trey, MDT, what the hell do you want to do? What is, you're you're in command. What do you want to do? Today, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go through the Mattel action figure line and tell you what I would change. What would I do if I were the head booker, head guy over at Mattel right now for WWE action figures? What decisions I would make going forward for the line, for the talent, for everything moving forward regarding our beloved WWE action figures? And before we move forward, guys, I do want to say that I absolutely love Mattel. I love all the guys over there that work so hard. Steve and Bill and all the people that are involved in creating our WWE figures are amazing. I love every single one of them and they do a fantastic job with all these epic figures. They are responsible for so many epic things that we get and the product and the line is in the best hands that it could possibly be in and today we're literally focusing on a fantasy world where if, uh, you know, if it was just a perfect world with no profit margins or anything like that, this is what I would do. So I'm stepping in and let's get the hell started, guys. I made a list. I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So as you guys know, we have the Elite Action Figure line. It's fantastic. It's great. Rey Mysterio, right? here is absolutely bonkers, right? I absolutely love this Rey Mysterio. Elite 72 Rey Mysterio is a fantasy booking fart bag. But one thing that I would implement into these figures right now today is I would absolutely implement today. Moving forward, every single WWE Elite action figure would now come with double jointed arms. If you guys don't know what double jointed arms are, they're the arms that we get on the Ultimate Editions. You guys know the, uh, I think it's like a $5 increase in price, possibly a little bit more. You guys know that the double jointed arms have two Two points of articulation right here and on a regular elite figure they only have one single part you guys can see the difference here you have the elbow is connected to the upper arm and down here it's two separations that way it gives you a better bend obviously Brock Lesnar can grip his nose and Rey Mysterio cannot grip his nose as you guys can see by the obvious gapage right there not too far off actually so it just shows you how great it would be if we had double jointed arms now I don't think you really get the idea of how great double jointed arms are until you do some different things like he can literally choke himself out right here. You can wrap guys all the way around when doing like a German suplex. This Ronda Rousey is another great example of her double jointed arm. She can literally punch herself in the face repeatedly. She can almost grab her opposite shoulder with this double jointed arm. Lines like Marvel Legends and all kinds of stuff already implement these. They are in smaller scale and I'm sure their budgets are a little bit different and every company is absolutely different when it comes to profit margins and stuff like that. But if I, if, it, if we're living in a fantasy world, I'm putting double jointed arms on the elites immediately. Now, as far as Ultimate Editions go, how would I change that? I'm not exactly sure what we would do. I guess the Ultimate Edition line would either be discontinued or it could continue, except it would be, you know, a focus on more head sculpts. It would give us more accessories, more clothing, more different options like that. Maybe a full promo gear and cloth that could go over the wrestler's wrestling attire with interchangeable parts like we've seen in the past with other figures. The Ultimate Edition Ronda Rousey was very similar in that matter, how she had her entrance gear and then she had her regular Shinsuke was like that, but it was more plasticky. I would go probably, like, the Brock Lesnar would have included bare hands, as well as the shirt and the pants and the hat. You know what I'm saying? Like a full promo gear, and then a full wrestling gear, all in cloth and stuff like that. Maybe that's how you could change up the Ultimate Editions. Another thing I would do with Ultimate Editions is I would possibly change the torso. Now, I do love the seamlessness of the Brock Lesnar. I think that this torso is beautiful. It's one of my favorite Mattel figures they've ever made. I just love how, I don't know, just look how seamless it is. You can't even see 
the joints on this torso. Like, unless you're moving it around, like, look at that right there. That just looks beautiful in figure form. I honestly don't know how you could change it. Like, if we get this Finn Balor up here, you guys will see that. It's pretty seamless, too, but I don't think, I, I don't know. I just don't feel that the Ultimate Edition's, like, torsos get as much articulation as maybe an Elite gets. Now, I guess we can compare the, uh, the Mattel Elite right here. Here's a Brock Lesnar right here. Here's the Crunch Ford right there. And that's not the best anyways. It's probably just the way this torso is. But if you crunch forward this one, I don't see, like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's supposed to be more. It's definitely less, if anything, regarding articulation. So I don't really know why that's the torso design choice that they went with. I'm sure there's some sort of reason behind it. But I would uh, probably retool it. Even though I love the look of it, I think we need a little bit better of an ab crunch and like diaphragm pivot and stuff like that. Or at least I would love to see it. And then another thing would probably be butterfly joints. If you guys have never seen butterfly joints, it's the joints that are cut out right here that allow the uh, shoulders to move in more. So instead of uh, getting a reach around like this, this would crunch forward even more and you would have even more articulation as seen on the upcoming Ultimate Edition Hulk Hogan. I think that's supposed to have butterfly joints. So you guys will see what I'm talking about. I could have sworn I had a figure with butterfly joints, but actually hold, hold that thought. So I actually do. You guys can see here this Majin Vegeta figure right here. The butterfly joints are these joints right here in the shoulders that connect to the torso. So right here where the shoulders connect, uh, that little piece that folds in right there, this isn't the greatest butterfly joint, but you guys can see that uh, you have the double jointed arm and then like it allows for the arm to crunch more in. So I would add that to the Ultimate Edition figures if we were trying to, you know, get them to be differential from elites. Not only would I change up the elites and the ultimates, guys, let's go back to the basics, okay? Like, I think a lot of people can agree with me on this. I'm gonna go ahead and state some factual stuff going on right here. Okay, here is an older basic Mattel action figure and here is a more modern day. Now, I think anybody will agree the only reason you would ever buy a new basic figure is if you're not planning on posting it around or you're trying to do a simple head swap like we see with this Lars Sullivan Elite. I wanted to have a custom Elite Lars Sullivan, so I bought his basic and put the head sculpt over onto an Elite equivalent of his basic. Now, back in the day, what you would do is you could buy old basics and you could do an arm swap, right? Like, I can take these smaller arms and say I don't like the Elite 24 Dolph Ziggler because his arms are absolutely massive. I could buy the basic and I could take off not only the head sculpt to switch that out, maybe I like the basic head sculpt better. I could switch out the arms of the basic right here and put those on my Elite because they have the exact same articulation. They have the bicep swivel right here. They also have a great kick forward back and forth. The kicks really don't change here, but I will say the knee bend is definitely a lot better on the older basics. The new ones are super stiff, and every time I get a new basic, guys, if I try to bend this knee right here, like, if I try to bend it, the boot either, like, almost comes off, like, the boot is literally almost coming off, or uh, it just won't bend at all. It's so stiff. I feel like I'm gonna break the figure in half. And another thing is he doesn't even have ankle articulation. These figures are basically statues, and they do have these weird arms that don't have bicep swivel, and I don't know, man. Let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. I feel like a lot of people around the community don't like basic figures, but I know they sell well, and I don't know if the change in articulation was necessary. I don't know what all went into that, but uh, you guys can see here we do have ankle articulation. You have boot rotation. You do get boot, boot rotation over here, but the ankles going up and down, the bicep swivel, the ability to arm swap and head swap was great. I know you can still head swap, but I don't know. And also another thing is they make the neck peg holes, like the, the peg holes of the head sculpts, the new head sculpts. They're super duper small compared to older head sculpts, and I don't know what that is either. Maybe the retooling of the of the new basics, I'm not exactly sure, but I've snapped more neck pegs now due to that smaller neck peg hole that we've been dealing with with the new basics. Now, we're moving forward with our parts changes and stuff like that, guys. I do want to go over to a guy that uh, I've been staying this for years, and I would change up AJ Styles' torso. Now, this is a custom, this isn't a custom, this is the Elite 74 AJ Styles. Back in the day, I think it was like 2015, 2016, when G Natty was pumping out beautiful AJ Styles customs from, uh, you know, Angel and stuff when they were doing beautiful AJ Styles customs. They still make beautiful customs to this day, but I remember first seeing his AJ Styles that used the Sin Cara torso and then repainted and put the chest hair on it. This torso right here looks so much better on this figure than this one. I just feel like, to this day, this AJ Styles torso is too small, and I just, this is something that I would definitely implement if I was the head guy over at Mattel. I, I just would change it, man. I, I don't know what it is. I'm not a big fan of this torso. It's too small for AJ Styles to me. This gives it more broad. You know, AJ Styles has a pretty big chest. You get some nice defining stuff going on. I don't know. It just looks better, man. I'll pull up a picture as well if you guys haven't already seen it, and I just like that AJ Styles torso better for AJ Styles over what we
we get currently, and I know they're not going to change that. So if I was head Mattel, I would go ahead and change that. Another thing we've kind of already touched on, and now this isn't anything too crazy. I think we already touched on it a little bit here, is the women's figures. It's basically, you know, the same exact thing with the articulation. I would add ankle pivot to the women's figures. You guys know what I'm talking about. The ankle pivot is the same exact thing that we've seen on basics. This Peyton Royce is a terrible statue. That kind of relates to new basics, so I'm not going to cover that again. But this is an old basic right here. They already implemented double jointed knees, which are so fantastic. Look at that knee bend compared to this, this Emma figure right here. Like, look at that. That's not even 90 degrees, and then this one goes a lot more. So that is something they've already done, but the next step would definitely be to add some ankle pivot to the women's figures. That would make them even better. And uh, they've already, the, again, the, the addition of double jointed arms to every elite figure would make the women's figures even better. And then uh, I don't know if this, this ultimate Ronda Rousey has ankle pivot. Yeah, it does have ankle pivot. It's just so much better. The figure can stand better. You guys can see here, this is what we mean by ankle pivot. The ability to turn the foot so that you get better articulation and stability out of the figure is a must have. Now, something else I would implement, guys, is I would totally rid ourselves of the pine cone joints. You guys know what I'm talking about. I've covered it many times here on the channel. The pine cone joints are these types of joints right here, the little stick figures right in there, the little divots that are on those things. They're not ball joints. You could not remove this thigh from that ball joint at all. And the reason we would get rid of those is because it hinders articulation. The Jeff Hardy figures have them, and the old figures, you can't even, like, like look at that. His leg won't even stay in position. We've covered this many times in the past. It just, it, it hurts the articulation very much, and I'm going to compare that to a modern-day Rey Mysterio where they finally got rid of the pine cone joints. On bold joints, this thing can do everything, man. He can do splits. He can kick forward, backward. He just feels a lot better in the hand, and Rey Mysterio figures are my favorite figures nowadays, man. You can do so much ish with these, and here's another take on it is the Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy's definitely better, but it feels so stiff right here, and it feels like the leg's going to break off at any moment. I know a lot of people have this issue with their figures, talking about the, talking about the pine cone joints over ball joints. I would totally rid us of the pine cone joint problem, and I think I'd retool crotches and retool everything to where we would have some ball joints on here, and uh, you know we wouldn't have to deal with that anymore. I've seen so many people's legs break off due to that issue. Now we're going to talk about packaging and talking about new figure lines and talking about you know including different accessories with figures, guys. I'm going to dive into the Elite 71 Jeff Hardy because this is a perfect example with it. I was talking to BEW and Mike the Wrestling Collector the other day about this right here, and I do want to talk about this because I think that we need more figures like this, like the Elite 71 Jeff Hardy. You guys can see here that this figure came with three interchangeable head sculpts. Now, I know that not every figure could come with three interchangeable head sculpts, but maybe every figure could come with a couple head sculpts or something like that. We get interchangeable hands, we need interchangeable head sculpts. I think that a lot of people don't like when their figure's screaming the whole time. Maybe you could give us two different looks, maybe a serious face and a happy face, or a screaming face and a straight face. I feel like every figure needs to have a straight face, though, or a determined face, if you will. Maybe if they're a heel, they could have like a pissed off looking face, or maybe if they're a baby face, they could have more of a smirk, like the old top talent Seth Rollins, or maybe you could have like, you know, just a neutral face like the basic 102, and then the interchangeable head sculpt could be the screaming Elite 52 head sculpt. I don't know. I just thought that that would be really cool. Another thing that I said is maybe you could get a release Jeff Hardy in all black, and it could come with three different face paint Jeff Hardy head sculpts from what he's worn over the years. Like maybe a headband head sculpt with face paint, maybe a longer hair sculpt with different face paint from a different era of Jeff Hardy, and you'd have the standard black attire to interchange and make fix-ups and do all that stuff with. While this figure was awesome, it's like, yeah, we got three interchangeable face paints, but both of them were black and white. Now maybe that's because they've already used up all their paint deco from this lightning pink and this blue that we got over here, which is completely fine. I understand it, but in a perfect world, I would like to see, and I would implement the change of interchangeable head sculpts with different face paints and stuff like that, especially a Jeff Hardy release that I would like to see. And finally, for the last thing, guys, I got a couple figure lines that I would implement, and starting immediately is we would have a Ruthless Aggression Era line. I would start a Ruthless Aggression Era line. We got some Ruthless Aggression Era style figures here. You got Brock Lesnar, you got Jeff Hardy, you got an Eric Bischoff, and you have RVD. Now, this is obviously not who I'd put in my first line or anything, but I think that uh, the Ruthless Aggression doesn't get enough love, I think, man. I feel like it's overshadowed, especially like 02, 03, 04 era, uh, right through there, like 02 to 05. I feel like we're missing a ton of figures and different attires and stuff like Shawn Michaels from that era, uh, a, Sh a Shelton Benjamin from that style. I know we have the gold standard, but I would like to see an earlier 2000s Shelton Benjamin, a Triple H from, you know, we've gotten a couple Triple H's from that era, but I'd really like to see an 04-ish Evolution Triple H. And I don't know, there's just a lot of things that they could do. Maybe a Nikki from Spirit Squad for Dolph Ziggler. I would just like to implement a Ruthless Aggression era WWE figure wave. I really want that. I think it'd be excellent. I think they would sell very well, and I 
I think that a lot of people would buy those up. So that is an implemented series that I would like to see. And then finishing us off, now this one's kind of stupid. It probably would never fly and it's kind of just me coming off the cuff. But I would probably hire some designers and attire guys and stuff like that. And I would give us a fantasy attire line. Like a fantasy attire wave or something like that where, uh, and there's actually a couple ways you could do this now. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Nike ID, but how sick would it be if you got to go on MattelWWE.com and you took like a base figure. Maybe they could give you like a bunch of bases. Like you could just take a Seth Rollins, okay? And now I can select up to three or four different Seth's head. Maybe they have like all the different Seth heads available. Elite 37, you can edit the blonde streak or the hair color. You can do all the different Seth head sculpts are available. You put the head sculpt you want on it. You can pick the Seth Rollins torso you want. You can pick the arms. You can pick the colors of the arm bands and the, and the SR logos. They give you the different tights options. You know, you want the SummerSlam 2017 look or you want the Elite 75 look or you want the Toys R Us exclusive look. You can pick the knee pads. You can pick the kick pads. You can pick the colors, the different arrangements. Maybe you can put some different patterns on there. Maybe Mattel is in the process of making attires and you want to go ahead and make it yourself. You pay an extra fee, you go ahead and pump that out. Now that's a damn thing that I would love to see. A Nike ID inspired Mattel WWE action figure customization website to print these figures off like they do Nike shoes. There's no way they can't do it. I don't know, Brad. That's a really badass idea. Now, I don't know all the details of what would go into something like that, but that is something right there that would I, I would pay a lot of money to do something like that, man. I, I don't know. That's for hardcore collectors, I know, but if Nike ID does it, people paying two, two fifty for shoes, I'm sure that you could get away with paying forty, forty five, fifty for your own custom personalization WWE action figure that would not even chip. It would never chip. You wouldn't have to worry about customs and painting and stuff. You could literally order the figure with all the stuff and the deco and the stuff. Obviously, you could create your own fantasy attires right there on the, the Mattel WWE website. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of that idea down in the comment section below. This video went on a little bit longer than I expected, but you know what? I had a lot of fun making it, man. This is something I love doing. I love doing fantasy booking and personal ideas and taking over videos, and you guys seem to love when I do takeover videos and just sort of explain my own thoughts and opinions and all that good-ish regarding WWE figures or WWE booking or whatever the hell, but I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. I had a ton of fun. Obviously, I'm not the head creator of Mattel. I'm not gonna step in there like freaking Vince McMahon and take over day one, but you know what, Brad? If they'll have me, I'd, I'd gladly go over there and do that. But anyways, guys, I'm getting out of here. Thank you so very much for watching. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on everything here. Do you agree with my opinions? You got your own personal opinions or thoughts that you would implement at Mattel if you were the head booker over there? Let me know down in the comments section below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, my damn toys. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.